Hello hook loopers, welcome to my crochet channel, I'm Sarah. In this video today I'm showing you how to work bicolor Tunisian crochet working flat. Just like in the sample you see here. In my preview I described this method as revolutionary, though I'm sure this has been done before by someone as nothing is ever new in crochet. So let's just say I came up with this method all by myself because I couldn't find anything quite like this here on YouTube. So let's say it is revolutionary for me. So you will tell me in the comments if you have seen this method before or not. Anyway, this is how it's done. Let's start from a chain of say 16 stitches. Now I'll create a standard foundation row in Tunisian crochet, pulling up loops from all stitches forming the initial chain, specifically um, pulling them up, uh, inserting the hook in the so-called back bump of each chain. So if you just slightly uh, twist the chain towards you, you can see the back bumps. I'm talking about which are these ones so I go and insert the hook there and start pulling up loops And 16. Okay, so let's say now I want to make my return pass in another color because I want to obtain uh, what you have seen in my sample at the beginning, that is to say a uh, main color on front and another color on the back of the work. So I will attach my secondary color right now. So I'll attach it here, like this, and I will do my standard return pass with this color. This means I pull through one loop only first, then I yarn over. The first time I will yarn over with both the main yarn and the tail, so as to form some kind of uh, knot here. And I will pull through two loops together, okay? Then I will leave my tail hanging and proceed with my main uh, working yarn. I will yarn over and pull through two loops together, yarn over and pull through two loops together, as if, as in every standard return pass into Nishan crochet. And we will proceed like this in our return pass until we are left with two loops on the hook. So this situation here where we have one loop in the secondary color on the hook and one loop in the main color, the front color on the look as well, on the hook as well, sorry. So now what I do is I go fetch my main color, the yellow one. I bring it to the front while I take my secondary color and bring it to the front. While I take my main color, which was left hanging at the, at the left side of my work after the forward pass, I take it. Uh, back and finish my last uh, stitch of the return pass with the main color like this. So I pull through the last, the remaining two loops on the hook. 
So what I do now is I uh, pull and stretch out a bit my work so as to have this um, strand of yarn uh, hanging here in a loose way so that the main tension of my work is not uh, altered by, by it. Okay, then I will proceed uh, working in my second row in whatever stitch I need to work into like this. So I will work this uh, second row in Tunisian simple stitch so as to show you the method. So what I do is I insert the hook under the first vertical bar, this one, and I will yarn over and as I do so I will go with my hook over both strands of yarn, that is to say both the uh, back yarn here of my main color, my front color, and the um, yarn here in my secondary color at the same time. So I go over both of them, yarn over very simply, pull through and drop a loop on the hook. Now I proceed with my Tunisian simple stitch, so I insert the hook under the next vertical bar, but this time I will go with my hook under both of those two strands of yarn, here, okay? I yarn over, go with my hook still under both strands, pull through my vertical bar and drop another loop. Okay, now I proceed and I will do what I did here, that is to say I go with my hook under the vertical bar and then I go over both strands, which I am uh, holding in place more or less with my fingers here. So I go over them, yarn over and complete my stitch, drawing up a loop on the hook. And once again, you have understood it by now so I need to alternate between going over the strands of yarn and under them okay so this time I go under my vertical bar and under both strands of yarn yarn over go under again pull through my vertical bar and drop another loop this way alternating this movement by going with the hook over and under both strands of yarn, I am carrying both strands of yarn with me while um, weaving them in at the same time on the back of my work in a pretty way. Okay, I will show you afterwards the final result. So now I will proceed and go over and as you see this movement is actually quite natural and quick to do, to execute. Okay. Because otherwise, now I will explain you. So that was over, that's going under, both of them, then over, and now I need to, ah no, that's another one before my last stitch, so that was under, I believe, okay, okay, and now I have my last stitch, my end stitch, the so-called neat closing stitch, which I will do as always, go in both under the front vertical bar and the back bar of that last stitch, yarn over always with the main color and drop a loop. So now, since I carried both yarns with me, I have my secondary color already here. Otherwise, I would have needed to cut it off 
uh, after my uh, return pass with it and I would have needed to attach it again here. But with this method, I don't have to because I'm carrying it very simply and quickly with me. So now I will perform my return pass just like before, So I, but with the secondary color. So I yarn over with it and pull through one loop only first. And then I yarn over again and pull through two loops together and perform my standard return pass with my secondary color, thus forming the beautiful background uh, blue color. Okay, and just like before, when I'm in this situation where I have almost completed my return path and I have two loops on the hook, I will make my last stitch of the return path with my main color again. So in order not to get both uh, yarns tangled up together, I will bring my secondary yarn now to the front, take my main yarn and complete my stitch with it. Okay. And just like before, I will tug a little at my work. I want this um, strand of yarn here in the main color to be loose, not tight, because if I were to tighten it up, then I would lose the tension of my work. Okay. And just like before, I will work my third row, carrying both of these yarns with me as I proceed in the forward path. So let's try, for example, with another stitch, the Tunisian rib stitch, for example. So I will start with a simple stitch, where I go um, over both strands, one. Let's make a twisted stitch where I go under both strands, yarn over, pull through and draw up a loop. Okay. And so I proceed. Simple stitch over both strands, twisted stitch under both strands. Over. and under. Over, under, over, under. If you get the sequence wrong and you forget if you have to uh, go over or under both strands, it's not so a um, big problem because um, it will not show so much and it will be in the in the back anyway. So now I know simple stitch for me it's over, so it's easy to remember, and I know that the twisted stitch means we have to go under both strands. Okay, over, under, okay, like this, and then my neat closing stitch here, and that's it. Okay, so now I will proceed with the return pass just like before with my secondary color and show you the result. So two loops on the hook, secondary yarn on front, main yarn to complete the return pass like this very simple pull a little and that's my raw completed okay and this is how it looks on the back as you see it looks 
absolutely pretty as if it were a stitch on its own so I have no yarn ends to weave in uh, on the on, on both sides when I have to cut off yarn to do my return passes and and forward passes in the two different colors so I find this method absolutely helpful so I'm planning to do uh, many projects finally uh, obtaining my uh, bicolor um, projects also worked flat so this is it for today please tell me what you think of it don't be too harsh in critics and well I hope you like it see you next time and bye bye for now